Hello Steelers and welcome to this video in which I'm going to show you how I made these Soviet combat patrols for O Group. The techniques I use here can be used for any other Soviets or any other kind of bases that you're making, but I just wanted to make some specific markers for adding interest to my games of O Group by replacing the paper combat patrols I used with these 3D versions. The figures are from Command Decision, they're now owned by Warlord and they're all 15mm in scale. I bought some 50mm diameter bases from War Bases and then I super glued three figures onto each because that's how many I wanted for each of my combat patrols. Some people like to paint the figures first and then base them, but I'm happy to base them first and then paint them. Do whatever works for you. When the glue is dry it's time to start priming the figures. I find a white primer for 15mm is good because it gives you a bright base to work off. Using black or any other darker colour means that some of the later paints may become dull, especially bright colours and you'll probably have to go over them a couple of times. So I like to head this off at the pass with just a light coloured prime. I'll normally use a spray primer, but in this case I'd run out, so I just used a big brush and hit the figures up with that instead. Just ensure at this point everything is covered. It'll protect your figures later on anyway. Then we begin painting the tunic and the trousers. And for this, I use English Uniform by Vallejo. I'll put a list of all the paints I'm using in the video in the description below. At this point, don't worry about being too neat. Just ensure that all the areas are covered that need to be. This might look a little bit messy right now, and it certainly is, but the other areas are going to be covered over with paint anyway, and that's going to neaten the figures up. The key here is to work quickly, but don't put too much paint on your brush. The next thing to work on is the flesh, and for this I use Vallejo Sunny Skin Tone and a small brush to get in under the helmet and on the hands. Here, try not to paint on the tunic or the trousers, but the other areas are not a problem. I then paint the helmets in Russian green. If there's any other painted equipment, such as ammunition boxes, I will also paint those at this stage. I use black to paint the high boots that the Soviets wore, and this is a very quick process. For all the canvas equipment, such as the ammo pouches, the backpack, bread bags and any other strappings and things, I'll use khaki. This is most of the Soviet equipment really, so it's probably the longest stage of painting. I'll also paint the grey coat, which is rolled over some of the figure's shoulders, in US Tan Earth. This just makes it stand out slightly from the rest of the figures and also breaks up the muted uniforms that they wore. The rifle stocks are then painted in beige brown, along with any other wooden equipment that they may be carrying. At this point it's worth being as neat as you can. You can always go back and cut in the colours again, but it's best to avoid doing this and get it right first time. The final stage of the basic block painting is the metal of the weapons. So for this I'll use gun metal to paint the bolts and the barrels and anything else that's metal on the weapons here. Then it's my favourite stage, adding the Agrax Earthshade. This is the best wash on the market as far as I'm concerned, and it does a great job of shading the figures. Just ensure that the wash doesn't pool in the deep recesses by teasing it out with your brush. The final stage of the figures is then to paint highlights. For this, I go back to the base colours of the tunic and the trousers, the flesh, equipment, the helmets and any other grey coats. I don't bother highlighting the rifles or the metal on them, as I like the wash look of these anyway. But using the base colours, I'll add a small amount of paint on any raised area using a small brush. This will give you a three-tone look to the shading, but it's subtle enough not to stand out too much. You could really ignore this stage, but I'd always recommend highlighting the flesh if nothing else, simply because as humans we're drawn to faces, so making these pop on the figures is a good way of drawing attention to them. Once the highlighting is done, I'll varnish the figures. You can use whatever you want for this, but I usually use a spray matte varnish but brush on varnishes work just as well. And then when that's dried, it's time to finish off the bases. I use Vallejo's textured paste for this, and you can get this in any colour, but for these ones I'm using it in a greyish colour. This goes on with a brush and it's also washed off in water, so it's a very nice product to use and it's a great way of quickly finishing off bases. Then one of the very final things to do is to paint the rim of the base with a company colour. This is so that I can identify them on the tabletop. I was going to use the Soviet national colours, but as it's only red and gold, I decided that I would use red, white and blue for all my allied combat patrols. And these are also the national colours of Britain, France and America, and there are three companies, each with three bases. And last but not least is flocking the base. I paint undiluted PVA glue onto the base with a brush, and then I sprinkle static grass over the top. You could use a static grass applicator for this, but with 15mm figures I just don't bother, as I find blowing on the grass is enough to make it stand up anyway. And then when this is dry I will add grass tufts and any other foliage that I want to break up the base. And that's then finished. 
Each company has three combat patrols attached to it in our group, and the base colours will show which company is which when they're on the tabletop easily. As I said, I wanted to make my combat patrols a little bit more interesting than the paper circles I was using previously, and I think these will add a little bit of immersion to the game. You could also use these as patrol markers for chain of command, but they're not on the table as much as the patrol markers in our group are, but they are interchangeable. So thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't already subscribed, please do consider doing so, and also check out my Patreon where all the money raised goes straight back into producing more videos for the future.